In this Weekend Warrior video, I'm going to assemble a window seat shoe bench. Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome to the Average Me channel. In my work area, I have a desk unit that folds down from the wall. It's really a clever piece of furniture. It looks like a cabinet and then the desktop folds down and I thought this is going to save me a lot of space. And it really does until I realized, but every time I want to put that back, I have to do something with my computers and my papers. And while I was pondering that, looking straight ahead, I saw a window. And underneath that window was nothing. So I thought if I can find the right bench to put there, when I'm ready to put everything away, I can put it right in that bench and then I can fold my desk up against the wall and we have a nice, clean, tidy area. So here's a bench I found and let's get started and see how we put it together. I found this on Amazon. I will link this down below. So let's get started. Here's the packaging. It got a little banged up during delivery, but I think it's going to be fine once we open it up. As I open this up, there is styrofoam everywhere. So you might want to have a vacuum cleaner handy just to clean as you go. And I'm also going to use the box as my working surface, particularly since we have this hard tile floor. As you can see, there's a lot of parts here, so I'm going to wipe them off and set them aside and only bring the pieces over that I'm currently working on. Now we have a clean working surface. You can see all of the hardware is clearly labeled, as is every single piece to this unit. So it should be relatively easy to put together. There are no written instructions. Everything is just done through these pictures and diagrams. I guess we start with pieces 10, 5, and 9, and the hardware from bags A, B, and C. So the directions do tell you how many of each of these you need. Now, these go hand in hand. So anytime you use that, um, I don't even know what they call these, but they screw in to the edge or the face wherever they're going to go in. In this case, it's wherever they have this plastic uh, insert. And then this is what's used to tighten them together. I'll show you what that looks like. Just like that, be really careful because that insert is a soft plastic and I think it would be really easy to put that in too tightly and strip that out. The dowel is just resting in there. So that's a setup. I did that in four places. And now I'm going to lift this on edge. I'm going to line these holes up with this. And then this is going to drop in. I give that a turn and it'll tighten it all up. Okay, so we put this in. By the way, there are little arrows. Make sure the arrow is pointing down. And then we get a screwdriver and turn it. And now that's tight. And we do the same thing here, only now it's going to be on the bottom. Next, we're going to assemble pieces six and seven. There's the setup. I just discovered the directions are wrong, so a couple of pointers. Each one of these has an unfinished edge and a finished edge. So make sure that the unfinished edges go in the same direction and the finished edges, which are face down now, go in the same direction. Now, as you do that, here's the thing that's wrong in the directions. Notice these large holes are both on the inside. On the directions, you do not see that on part seven. In fact, right here they show part seven coming together by inserting the cam from the back. Now that's impossible because clearly the hole is to the inside, but here it's showing it to the back. It can't possibly be because the holes to assemble the shelf and the cam hole they're showing here to assemble the top are on the same side. So be careful. But I think the way I'm doing it is right and it's going to work. I'll assemble these and then later on we'll put the top on and the bottom by assembling that. And now we're going to take this top shelf that we put together first and we're going to attach it to this shelf that we just did. And here's where the problem was I was telling you about. It's going to work just fine, but the directions show this hole 
on the other side. So we'll bring this together and we'll tighten it up. Here's how it looks so far, but I just caught a mistake. Mistakes are good. They allow us to fix things. I make them so you don't have to. But you see right here, we don't want to see those when we're looking down on the shelf. We want that to be on the bottom of the shelf. So really easy to fix. I'm just going to take this piece and flip it 180 degrees and reassemble. There we go. That's how we want it to look. So now it's nice and clean when we're looking down on the top of it on the shelf that we'll be using. So here's where we are so far. And now we're going to put on this side piece number three. So as you can see, piece number three has a lot of these screws and dowels on it, but just get them all in place and then snap it to the side. And the key here is to make sure that these grooves are both to the back. If you do that, you're putting it together in the right direction. Now to assemble this, I had to get a smaller screwdriver just because it's a little space. So you might want to keep that in mind when you are assembling your tools. And don't forget to do the inside ones as well. There are four of them. And here's where we are. It's starting to look a little bit like a bench. Now we'll put this side on, which is side four, in almost exactly the same way. Now I turned it upside down and we are going to slide this back piece right into those grooves. I don't think I'll be able to do this very well on camera because I'm going to need my hands. But it's going to go in like that. And then it'll slide right down just like that. Now it's slid into place. Now we're going to put on the bottom. The bottom's a little different in that it uses these heavy screws. Now be careful. Once again, the directions say six screws and four dowels, but clearly it shows six dowels and you can see 12 holes. There's four, there's four, and there's four. So I think I'll be using six screws and six dowels, assuming they sent enough, which they did. To make it easy, it's dowels to the inside on the inside holes, screws to the outside, and we'll do that all the way down. Let's put the bottom on. Okay, that slid right into place. The groove underneath slid into the back panel. Now all we have to do is put those six screws in the top. So while I have this upside down, I'm going to put these feet on. The instructions save that step till the end. Doesn't make sense to me. They're like nails, but they have the plastic or nylon feet. So I'm going to nail one in each of the four corners. And then the other four, I'm just going to space out along the edge. Be really careful with these. They're pretty cheaply made. You can see that nail head's almost popping through. I might actually put felt pads on these when I'm done. Maybe you'll want to use felt pads instead of these. You can see this one's already starting to crack and I did not even hit it that hard. I have some rubber pads. They're actually a little thicker than that and I think I'm going to put one adhesive rubber pad adjacent to each of these feet. I just don't trust those. If I didn't already have them nailed in, I don't think I would have used them. There we go. Rubber pads in place. And the last step is to put this top on. I think I would recommend putting these latches on the top first because it's kind of tricky. Um, there's a little opening here. I don't know well you can see it, but a little opening. And there's a whole bag of screws to screw these in place. Now the only thing they don't address are these. And they certainly give you enough screws. These are the same screws that we used for the hinges. Um, these are to reinforce corners. So you slide this little piece in between the shelf and the side, for example, and then you put a screw in there and it holds the corners together a little more firmly. If I were to use these, I would put them underneath because you don't want to see them. But basically, you would put those in place like that, slide it down, and then drive a screw in there. And it gives you additional support. Of course, you do that underneath because that looks ugly. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of sitting on this. We're not going to have kids crawling all over it, so I'm not that concerned about it. But you might want to consider putting those corner braces in place. They don't give you instructions. They don't tell you where they go. And they also provide a sheet of white stickers so you can cover up all of those holes. Just like that. 
And now when I'm through with work, I can put my computer equipment and my work away. I can put my table up and look at that. Everything is neat and tidy. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner and don't forget to ring that bell icon. That way you'll know when I post new videos. Thanks for joining me on this Weekend Warrior. See you next week. I'm Mark and this is The Average Me Channel.